Okay, so we will start in few minutes. Any minutes? Let's see. Okay, so let's start it. Okay. This is our code from last time. We have implemented the user interface using keyboard and mouse, right? And since we are greatly ahead of our, our schedule, uh, so in today's lecture, I will go through all the code. I mean, I will go through all the code again and let you know what we have achieved by far. Okay. And also, I will talk about something like if you want to learn the Unreal Engine. Uh, where to start with. Okay, and yeah. I mean, the reason we are ahead of schedule is because uh, if if this is an um, offline course, uh, we, we should have two small quiz during the term. Uh, so, that means, uh, in general, we, we should have two quiz a um, few weeks ago, and uh, maybe sometimes now. Uh, but since we don't have it, uh, it means we have one week free. Uh, okay. So, anyway, let's go through the code again. And also, when I go through the code, if you feel like you have any question about any code or any theory, just let me know. Okay? And I will okay. stop here for a while, just make sure some student can take a screenshot. To make sure you're in the class. Okay. We have live students. Okay. So this is our code we have done by far. Uh, we are learning OpenGL, the modern Open The modern OpenGL is different from the the old one, uh, which we use uh, shaders. So shaders is the core concept for modern OpenGL. Shader, so the first question, what is shader? Shader is just a small piece of code or some small program that you can run and execute them in the GPU or in graphic cards. Okay, because the graphic card is so powerful and we want the GPU to draw all the things. So we write something called shader, or a small program called shader. 
generally there are two different graphic APIs, uh, two main graphic APIs. One is the OpenGL or uh, GLS, uh, GLSL, which stands for OpenGL Shading Language. Another one is HLSL. It's a high level shading language. And this is uh, the HLSL is adopted by the Microsoft um, if you use uh, DirectX. So those are two graphic APIs. And we use these two language to write shaders. Okay. So this is the main framework, uh, sorry, the main co function of the code. We have a lot of headers. Uh, this is for input output, the OpenGL core profile. The GFW is a library to handle the uh, operation system. So you might use a different operating system. Uh, maybe you're using Linux, uh, Windows, Mac, and we want the code to be the same. Okay, uh, we want to write the same code for everything. That's why we use GFW. We have implemented the shader and camera. We will go through this later. And also GRM. GRM is for transformation or 3D transformation. And those are the functions to handle the input, like key input, mouse input, and we can respond to this input by either implementing this function or adding some other functions by using this function just to take a record about something. Okay. So we have camera, which we created. We will go through it later. And the bool function is the keys, where we store all the keys we pressed. And we also have some variables, which we will see them when we use them. But this two are important. It means we want to open a window with 800 pixels by 600 pixels. Okay, so those are this variable. Okay, so first, in the main function, we init and set the environment. There are a few options we need to do. Uh, first, we need to set, okay, we want to draw a window. We want to create a window, right? Uh, by using GRFW, uh, we first initialize it, and we, we, want, we should set a concept context for the window. We should say, okay, is this for drawing or is this for just just code or some text? But now we just set it for drawing. And we say, okay, this is context version. Uh, this is OpenGL window and the context version is 3 by 3. 3.3, 3, sorry. And we want it to be forward compatible. So it means uh, any version after 3.3 is uh, is possible in this window okay and this just think of uh, just look carefully about these functions we set it by give a a flag this is like flag the flag which we want to set and the value we want to set. Okay, so the first one is a flag. Uh, second one is the value. Well, this one is the forward compatible is must for Mac. I mean, if you not do not include this in Mac, you will have some error. I mean, even even from now, I mean, I tried it uh, recently. For Mac, you still have to write this. But for Windows, you don't. 
and this is resizable. We want the window to be resizable. Okay, just in case there's one still going out. So after the, all the setting, we create a window. Okay, we create a window. Uh, we give some names of the window. We have the width and height of the window. And then we check if the window is created or not. If it's created, then it's good. If not, we see out something and terminate it we don't want the process to keep running all the time okay and then is there something we need to do for the laptop in i mean the uh, because there are so many high resolution screen a volume on market. I mean, most of you might using high resolution screen for your laptop. And the high resolution screen is what it means is it uses more pixel, more memory to describe a window. I mean, the same pixel which the operation system think of. So it means if the operation system think this is one pixel, but the underlying hardware are using maybe four or nine pixels to represent this single one pixel. Okay, so this is the uh, the difference between the hard hardware and the software. Uh, if you still don't understand the high resolution screen, just look at your mobile phone. Uh, a lot of mobile phones are using the retina display, right? Uh, I think most, some of you are using iPhone. Uh, those are retina display. Uh, retina display uh, means you are using nine pixels to represent one pixel in the system. Okay. So here. In order to get the actual hardware frame buffer size, we need to get it using the GFW, get frame buffer size function. We want to know, okay, if we draw this window, what's the exact size of the memory we are using? to draw this window in our uh, laptop or high resolution screen, okay? So that's why we need this function. We try to get the screen wise and screen height, these two variable. Because everything we draw is on the frame buffer, is on the hardware. And we show the hardware to our operation system and then show display it on the screen. So that's why we need these two variable. Uh, we need to know the exercise of these two. And then we make contacts current. So it means, okay, we activate this window. Actually, this window is just like when we click this window, everything we modified can be done within this window. If we do not activate this window, maybe we activate some other window, like if I click this, everything I type or, uh, yeah, everything, every time I type my keyboard, it the, only this folder or this window responds to uh, my user input, but no, this one doesn't. So we need to make one window to be current. So it's, it's more like make this window activate. Okay. So this is current. 
And then we can, when we make this window current, we can set the key callback function for this window as well, and mouse callback. So we can accept the user input. Next, we will enable the OpenGL. We initialize it, uh, we in enable it first, and then initialize it. Okay, so we enable the, if it fails, we will say, okay, it fails. Then we will use uh, GL enable and GL depth function to enable the depth test. There are some text which is a fixed function in OpenGL, like the depth test, the blend test, scissor test, and stencil test. We only cover the depth test and the blend test. Uh, but for the other tests, they are for more advanced lectures, because you can use them to, in, to, to uh, implement some visual effects. Okay. So how to enable this test? We first use the enable function and set the function for this test. Because when we enable a test, we should give the standard about how we want to test them. Okay. Uh, yeah. Make sure, because I saw one more student drawing. So make sure your name is on it. If it's on it, then it's okay. Then, from now on, we have set up all the environment. We can create a shader, uh, compile a shader, prepare all the data, and start drawing. So before this, it's all preparation. Okay, we setting up the environment. We set up the window. Okay, so one more student. Make sure your name is on it. If it's not, just let me know. So we create two shaders. The shader where so first thing is where the shader file. The shader file is in the RAS folder, so it means how to interpret this thing. This string. This is a string, right? It also means a file path. So it gives you the path to find these two files. So it's in the rest folder, okay? And the backslash is more like open it or get into it. So under the current folder, we go to the rest folder, open it, go to the shaders folder, open it, and then get this file. So where's the current folder? The current folder is here, it's in this main function. So where you put this, this main function, I mean this file, this is the current folder. So if you want to see it, 
just show it in the Finder or uh, for Visual Studio. You can also find the right place just by right click it, and then there's an option you find it in Explorer. I think that's what it called. Okay, so the current folder is here. This is the current folder. It means go to the dress folder, get into it. The shaders folder, uh, backslash means get into it. Then you get the core VS and core FS. So those are two shader functions. Uh, shader function is the key to mobile than OpenGL because everything you write is in the shader. So, uh, and everything in the shader, shader is executed in graphic cards. So in shaders, this is vertex shader. So vertex shader only handles everything about the position of the, the shader, uh, position of the vertex and and how the input, how we want to handle with the input. So we have two input here. Uh, this input, they are um, declared by something called layout A. This means we read these things from the memory, from the graphic memory, okay? So if we start with layout A, it means we get this variable from the graphic memory. And we have this input, this output. And we also have something start with uniform. Uniform means we get this variable from the memory, the main memory. This is from the graphic memory, and this is from main memory. Okay, so they are from different place. So to read this, we need VAO and VBO. But to read this, we need to just uh, find these variables and location and send the value of this variable to the shader program. So here we, in the vertex shader, it all should always have a main function. This means, okay, this function is executed in our graphic uh, GPU, okay? And we get the position. This means the projection will transform. Uh, it means we simulate the real world camera. And also have some trans well, uh, transform, 3D transform of the shape, okay, and we're passing this color to the next step. The next step is, is fragment shader, or some in the HLS area, it is called the pixel shader. So let's look at the fragment shader or pixel shader. The pixel shader is handling things on pixel level, okay? So here we handle the things on the vertex level. So if we draw a triangle, it only have three vertexes. So it means on vertex shader, we only handle these three points or three vertices. But for fra fragment shader, it handles every pixel covered by these three points or three vertices. So it's every pixel within this triangle. So you see they are handling different things. And uh, the workload is different. Okay, I think there's one student keep going out and in, out and in. So yeah, let's wait on See roughly who is going out and in. Okay, so we get the color from the previous vertex shader. 
So for purpose, this word actually we use out our color. So to get this, we need to say it's in and we same name our color. A same data type. So this variable can be passing to here. Okay, so in fragment shader, we handle every, we just handle the color, right? So we output the color. You see, this is output, and the output is a vac four. Uh, here we use 0.5, but actually 1.0 is better now because there's no blending, no transparency here. So those are two shaders we write. And those two is the key for modern OpenGL. Because everything actually is here. So we can have a lot of visual effects by writing different vertex shader and fragment shader. Next, let's see the just code. We have all these vertices. And uh, now at this time vertices are in the memory, the main memory. Uh, this is a cube. And we want to send this data to the graphic memory. So this is how we do it. We use the video and the video. Those are two objects uh, which you can send the data to the graphic memory and interpret them. So we generate one, uh, bind them, they always come in pairs. Okay, so they always come comes in pairs. Uh, we use the buffer data to send the data and send it to the area where indicated by GR array buffer. And we use them to for static draw. It means we draw it several, a lot of times. We read it a lot of times, but we don't change it. Then these two line, sorry, these four lines are the key. With this four line, we can we can see how we uh, we can link this data to our variable. Okay, so those two, those four lines, just like the, to link the variable in the work, uh, vertex shader to the memory space that actually stores this data. And the key is all these parameters. So the first one, zero. Zero means, okay, we are handling something about the location equal to zero. So it means we are handling the variable about the position. And position is a three float number, right? It has X, Y, Z component, so it's three float. And we don't want to normalize it. So those two means how we interpret this or how we get the position from all this chunk of data. So here means we start from the beginning and every six 
float value, we will get the second data. And for each data we get, we use three float. Okay, so it means here we start from zero. Uh, we get three float numbers. This is the first position. And the second one, where we get it, we jump six. So this this zero, we jump one, two, three, four, five, six. Here we can get the second position. And then we will for the third position, we also still need to jump six float number. This is how to interpolate. And with the same explanation, you can get what this means. Okay? So this means we can get this next one for the color. After setting this, we can unbind it. And now we can draw the thing. Okay, the draw is actually a big wire loop. We keep drawing until the window is still showing, it's displaying. We set the current time, and we calculate the data time for each frame, or each loop. Actually, if you calculate the data time here, it's different from the, the screen uh, frame per second. Is because the screen is showing a different frame rate. Here we only decide how quickly we can calculate in each loop. But this is different from actually the frame uh, FPS. Okay. So in the screen, okay. first let me see if any of you have questions. Okay. First of all, uh, we set the first of all, we set the uh, wheel port. Okay. The viewport is set by just one function called gear viewport, and uh, it decides what size of the. I mean, we we have the frame buffer, right? But we it, we should decide uh, how large the window we want to use to to show our frame buffer. So we start from zero zero and screen wide, screen height. So this is the whole window. And next is the FW pull event. This is handling all the input output. Okay, so all the input output uh, record as some events, and they were stored locally. If we want to use them, you can use all this callback function to execute them. So that's why uh, we have these two functions, which means key callback and mouse callback. We didn't call them directly, but we still execute them. It means all these things are actually here.
Okay, so we also have these two movements. We can do some movements. And we clear color. Clear color is more like a reset. This is more like reset. Reset the frame buffer. Because every time we draw it on the frame buffer, unless we reset them, they are still what, uh, they won't change, okay? Unless we reset them. So clear color is more like reset. We reset the color and reset the depth buffer a bit. Then we can do the transform and draw the things. Okay, uh, I think we can have a few minutes break and then we will go back and see how this transform do and how we draw it.
Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so we have seen set up every uh, clear the window. Okay, uh, I mean initialize the frame buffer. Now we can do the transform and draw the thing. So first thing is how we do the transform. We use the GIM library. Uh, we done the, the theory before, right? We know they are all matrix multiplication. We only use matrix times vertex to get all this transform. So uh, we can do the translate, rotate, and scale. So if you know the theory, you know how we why we set this. Translate is just like translate from X and Y and Z direction. Rotate is like you set the rotating angle and uh, rotation axis. Where you want to rotate it. And scale is more like uh you set the size for X and Y and Z direction. As order doesn't matter. So if you change order, you will get completely different kind times of sh object if you change this direction uh these orders. Okay. And those for transform. And we also need the projection the wheel. Projection is the how we simulate the projection matrix or perspective projection. To describe the projection, we need several parameters. The FOV, which is zoom. Uh, the, the F, uh, this is the aspect ratio. So the width uh, compared with height. Uh, the near plane and the far plane. With these four parameters, we can uniquely Decide a projection plan, uh, sorry, a projection space. Or oh, this is called a threshold. In mode OpenGL, this is, we use the perspective, or we can implement this. Uh, but for old OpenGL, if you're using see some old OpenGL code, this is called a threshold. Okay, and then the view matrix. View matrix you get from the camera. Now we can use. Use the shader, which parsing this variable to our shader. Now you see all these things are executed here. It means they are executed in the memory or the GPU. Uh, sorry, or the CPU. We parsing this data from the main memory to the GPU or graphic memory by finding the location of this variable first, and then parsing the value. So find the position, parsing the value. Find the position and parsing the value. Or sending the value to it. After that, we can bind the data and draw this cube. So th though this is the way we change this value here in vertex shader. So you see, they have different names. We can have we can make them have different names, but it means the, the variable here is defined inside the GPU, but the variable here are defined inside in the CPU. They are in different places. We want to call them. We need to find the place and uh, and assign it. Now we draw it and then we swap buffer. Okay, after drawing, I keep running until we want the window closed. We close it or press the ESC key to close it. Then we just do all these cleaning things. Now we have a, some key callback function which is responsible for the key. We can use the key, take a record of the key here. If it's escape, we close the window. And for this key, 
we pressed, we create something uh, to simulate the uh, first person game. We change the position of the camera to implement something like going forward, backward, left, and right. Okay, so this part means this. And also, we use the mouse. We use the mouse uh, position. If it goes up or goes left, actually our orientation in the window also changed according to it. We also call call the camera function, which we change the front of the camera. Now let's see a shader. I won't cover the shader because shader is just handle compile, open file, and compile file. It don't have too much difficulty. But on the camera, the camera is what we create to simulate the camera. Uh, we have all this constant. We have the direction we can move, and we create a class. This is a constructor. Using the constructor, every time we create a camera, we can we need to parsing or take a record about all this variable. Okay, so this variable we need a local variable for private variable for this all these things because here uh, the lifespan of this variable only exists here within this function. So we need to take a local record by this. We use this to indicate this variable is actually this one. Uh, so it's not this one. It's not this one. Okay. We take a record about all the variable and we update it. We have to get a view matrix. View matrix is using look at. So look at is a GRM function. We just put the position, the front direction, and the up direction. Then with these two, we can generate a lookup. Actually, this is not front direction. It means uh, some area in front, some position in front. So actually, the, this function calculates the front by this subtract this to get from. Okay. So this is a look at function. I will get zoom. Zoom is for uh, FOV field of view. Uh, we can respond to the keyboards. So every time if we move forward, so current position is just add a little bit of fr with front. Okay, so if backward is minus something with front, left and right is same. And process mouse movement. So the mouse, if you change in X offset or Y offset, it just change a little bit about your and pitch because your and pitch decides the orientation of the camera okay and there's one important fun um, private function called update camera vectors this function is how we calculate front up and right and we use this using polo coordinate system so we use cosine, uh, cosine. So if you're not familiar with this, just go back to the advanced mathematics, and you will see how we describe it. Actually, it's also high school mathematics. So how we use this polar coordinate system to calculate the direction. So we can use this to get from. 
but getting right and up and using different things. This is what we learned in linear algebra. The linear algebra we want to create a basis using one vector. We need to generate. There's a temp here of upward up here. Use a cross product. And this is also cross product. I mean, I won't cover too much detail theory here, but if you still have queries, just watch that replay about this. I mean, how we, what are the mathematic formula for this? Or you can always uh, search it online for the camera. Uh, if you search for camera view, view matrix or camera vectors, uh, you will see this. Oh, so is the camera coordinate system or uh, the camera camera view matrix, you will find how what are the mathematical things behind it. Okay, so this is a camera. So basically, this is what we have achieved by far. We actually we have achieved a lot of things, uh, step by step, right? I mean, we we create. We draw the window first, and then we draw some shapes, and we draw a cube. After that, we can add some keyboard to close the window, and then we find okay, it's not good enough. We want to simulate the camera. So we write the camera, and for the camera, we always we also control the camera right using mouse and the keys. Also, we implement some 3D transformation, and we build them step by step through the term. Okay. Yes, yeah. so I will give you some few minutes to go through it and ask me if you have any questions.
Okay, any question?
Uh, yeah. One more thing. Uh, I will go to the university and I will stay in Teach Building 1. Now, uh, if you are on campus and you have some problems or questions, I can answer your question face by face. So what I mean is I, I'm, I'm going to the uni now uh, in a few minutes. Uh, it might take me 20 minutes to get to the uni. And when I was there, I can answer all your questions. Okay. So if you have questions, just go to the uh, universe, go to university, uh, teaching building. Okay. And then contact me by WeChat. Uh, I, I may be in the lobby or in some of the classroom. Okay, so if you if you are in the campus and uh, you want to ask me some questions, I can answer it face by face. For just uh, just for today's lecture, okay, okay. So I'm packing up and go to uni. Uh, let me know if you have questions. Mm. And if you you are on campus and want to see me and ask some questions, I can answer you in. 20 or, or no more than half an hour. Okay. So see you soon.